Hello everyone. Hi. It's been a while since I filmed from a hotel. I'm currently in Los Angeles because I'm actually here for KCON, which is going to be part of another vlog, but we're here a couple of days early because we're going to another concert as well. And because we have some spare time, I keep saying we, I'm here with my best friend Katie, but since we have some spare time, we decided to go to some LA bookstores that we've both wanted to go to for a while, like the Ripped Bodice and the Last Bookstore. So we're gonna go to those and potentially more. Today though, we are going to the Ripped Bodice, which is a romance bookstore. And I've seen pictures of it and people going to it like for years and it always looks so pretty and I've always wanted to go and I've been to LA many times in my life and I've still never gone. So today we're finally going to go and see it for the first time and I'm very, very excited. So basically this is just gonna be like a bookstore vlog, um, an LA bookstore tour, I guess. So I'm just gonna take you along with me on our day, um, probably two days since it's gonna take a couple of days to get to all of them. I'll probably do a haul at the end of it and show you what I buy because there's no way I'm going to all these bookstores and not buying a book. Um, it's inevitable. We're gonna head out soon. So I will check in with you all very soon. See you at the bookstore. she is so close to things that make white people uncomfortable. I don't think I've ever seen it shelved better. Mm -mm. No.
All right, so those were all of the bookstores that I visited while I was in LA. I had an amazing time making this video and visiting all of them. It was just wonderful to see so many bookstores that I dreamed of going to for so long. I love making bookstore vlogs because I can capture like this moment in time visiting one of my favorite types of places. And it's always just so great to be able to watch that back. So they're really, really fun for me to make. I had a good time editing this one and I had an even more incredible time visiting all of these beautiful, beautiful bookstores. I loved the last bookstore. That place felt like you were literally entering a different world and it was Oh my god, it was everything I could want in a bookstore. It was fantastic. The Ripped Bodice was also absolutely beautiful. The cutest, most like romantic looking store, which is perfect since it's a romance bookstore. And I'd been to the Barnes and Noble at the Grove before, but it had been years since I've been. And I just love that it's three stories. I love those escalators. And we went up and down so many times. So yeah, it was really fun. And I'm glad I got to capture all of that and share it with you. But I am here now to give you all my book haul of the books that I bought while I was in LA and also some books that I bought before I left. No, I did not buy all of these in LA. I didn't even have much room to bring stuff back, but I did buy at least one thing from each bookstore I went to. So yeah, let's get into them. Quickly before we get into all the books, I want to remind you all that my reading journal, the Clockwork Reader reading journal, is available now. The link is in the description if you want to get yourself a copy, but it is the perfect companion to your reading if you like to journal and track the books that you read. I made this just so you can do that, so yes, the link is in the description, so be sure to check that out. And also my bracelet that I designed with Ana Luisa is linked in the description as always, along with my necklace that I designed with them. Both of these are linked down below if you would like to get yourself one as well. All right, now let's get into the book haul. I'm going to start with the books that I bought while I was in LA and then we'll go into all the ones that I got before. It's a lot, like you can't see the whole stack, but I've been so bad this year when it comes to buying books. I have not been able to stop, but I've also been reading voraciously. So I think it kind of makes up for it. I say this in every haul. I can't help myself. I love collecting books. <laughs> All right, so from The Ripped Bodice, I ended up picking up The Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. I have been wanting to read this for a long time. It's been like high on my priority list for a bit. First of all, because of this cover, I just love it. I love the color. Everything about this cover is everything I like. So that absolutely drew me to this book. Um, and then the other thing is that I've just heard a couple of people describe it as extremely romantic. From the vague things I've heard about it, I'm pretty sure it's historical romance. I really don't know very much about it because I don't want to. I want to be surprised by this book, but it just like looks like something I'd like. I can't explain that. I just get a vibe and I'm going off of that vibe. So hopefully it doesn't disappoint. And yeah, I just, I had to pick up a romance book while I was at The Ripped Bodice. I was considering getting some other ones that I'd like heard more about or maybe getting one of the like blind date with a book books, but this one was high on my list already and they had it. So that was why I picked this one up. All right, this next book I picked up while we were at Barnes and Noble and that is Against White Feminism, Notes on on Disruption by Rafia Zakaria. I saw somebody read an excerpt of this on TikTok, which I've said before is not the best reason to buy a book. However, this is nonfiction and this is very different. <laughs> I'm not going based off of some like really romantic quote that was like one line in this book. They read like a whole passage of it and it reignited my need to read more feminist theory, more feminist criticism and stuff. And it's been a long time since I've read like a full nonfiction book about it. And this just sounded exactly like what I needed. The book's tagline is a radically inclusive, intersectional, transnational approach to the fight for women's rights. And I'm sure that it pretty much like aims to recenter women of color in the feminist movement and talk about feminism more so through the lens of women of color rather than the way that modern media likes to portray feminism as very white centric. This is the type of stuff that like I studied in school so this is exactly like what I'm super into and it's the type of academic stuff that I nerd out on so um, I'm really excited to read this and I hope that this lives up to the hype that I've created for it in my head. <laughs> the next two books are the ones I picked up at the last bookstore and the first one is a book I already have a copy of, but I had to get this other copy. I'd seen this before. It wasn't like they only sold this at the last bookstore, but something about buying it there just felt special and it felt right. And this edition was just, it was calling my name and I needed to get it. And that is this beautiful edition of The Picture of Dorian Gray. Do you see these like gold foil pages? I love these editions of classics. They're so good. What are these called? Let me find out. I think they're called the Chiltern Editions. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But yeah, they have a ton of editions of several different classic books, like all of Jane Austen's work, any extremely popular classic that you can think of. They probably have an edition of it. And I like a lot of them. And I'd seen this one before, but just not in person. But for some reason, seeing this in person, I was like, I need it. This is just the edition of Dorian Gray for me. I was going to get the Penguin Classics one, which I think I mentioned in my last haul, because I also hauled Dorian Gray. Because yes, now I have two copies of it. But this one just 
just feels right to me. Like, I don't know why. This one just feels like my edition of this book. And I feel like it's very fitting for the themes of the story because it's so pretty and like glittery on the outside. And then on the inside, if you've read the book, you know the story. I just really liked the symbolism of that. So I decided to get this one and I'm very happy that I did. I can't wait to display it on my shelf. It's just so beautiful. All right, and then the second book I picked up at the last bookstore is a manga that I'd been in desperate need of and I could not find anywhere online. So I was so happy when I saw that they had it and that is volume three of Snow White with the Red Hair. I have volumes one, two, four, and five and I have not been able to find volume three anywhere. It was sold out for so long. I don't know if it's still sold out, but it was before I bought this one and they just happened to have one and I was like, oh my god, I have to get it. So now I finally have volumes one through five so I can read the first five volumes. I've talked about the show before and it is one of my favorite anime of all time. I've seen it so many times. It is one of the best romance anime, elite, highly recommend, you should watch it. And I'm very excited to read the manga because I know there's so much more story. So yeah, I was very happy to find this. All right, now we're gonna get into the rest of the books that I bought uh, before I went to LA because I have not hauled any of these yet. And uh, continuing on with the trend of manga, I also bought volume, what is this volume? 36 of Yona of the Dawn. Yes, I have been trying to keep up with all of these. No, I still haven't read past like volume 11 or something. I need to pick them up again. But yeah, again, I've talked about the series so much. It is one of my all-time favorite anime series if you haven't seen it yet what are you doing literally go watch it and then start reading them and i need to continue reading them <laughs> okay next is a very random book i think i've mentioned this on my channel once before because i used to have a different copy of it but i literally don't know what i did i don't think i unhauled it but maybe i did I can't remember, but I decided to repurchase it because this is one of my favorite childhood books. And for some reason recently, I was just thinking about it and I felt like rereading it. And that is The Last of the Really Great Wang Noodles by Julie Andrews Edwards. Yes, this is the Julie Andrews. She is the author of this book. I read this in like third grade, I think. So like a really long time ago, but I remember loving it. Like I loved it so much. And there's like a line in this book that I still think about to this day. That's how profoundly this impacted my like I don't know, six, seven year old brain. <laughs> and yeah, I just really felt like I needed a copy for my bookshelves because I really do want to reread it. Maybe I'll make like a whole video rereading some of my favorite childhood books and that can be like a little fun experiment. I think it'll also be really interesting to see it from like an adult perspective because I haven't read it since I was that young. So I think it'll be fascinating to see how my perspective has changed. The next book I have here is an arc that was sent to me by Goodreads and that is The Winners by Frederick Bachman. This arc, this book is just so big. Like, oh my God. <laughs> this book is, from what I understand, the third book in his Beartown trilogy. I read Beartown earlier this year, I think. I can't remember if I read it last year or this year, but I think it was this year. And that was after I'd read um, A Man Called Uva last year, which I loved. And Beartown was also really great. It was very sad. Definitely look up content warnings if you decide to read that book. The whole story is about like a sexual assault case. So it's very difficult to read, but I think it's a trilogy. And this is the third book. This comes out October 10th. Yes, October 10th. And so I'm very excited to read more of his books and continue on with the series. All right, next up, I have another book that was gifted to me by the publisher. This was sent to me by Simon & Schuster. And that is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Everyone on the internet has been talking about this book lately. I've seen it everywhere. And I've been so excited to read it ever since she announced the title. Once I saw that title, I was like, that is gonna be good. Like it's just going to be good. And based on reviews so far, everyone's saying that it is. So I'm very excited to read this. I have actually started it. So this is one of the books I'm currently reading this one. And the next book that I have to haul are the two books I'm currently in the middle of. But if you happen to not know about this book, if you haven't heard about it, uh, which would be surprising because literally everyone's talking about it, it is Jeanette McCurdy who was an actress on Nickelodeon back when I was a kid. She was on iCarly and Sam and Cat, and this is her memoir about her mom's death, her life as a child actor, and her relationship with her abusive mother. I have looked into it, so I know that it is definitely going to be a very difficult book to read. It obviously deals with abuse, she suffered from a severe eating disorder and I know she talks about that a lot in the book and I know it goes into a lot of detail about those things. It's probably going to be really hard to read but at the same time I just genuinely think I'm really going to love this and I'm just very happy for her and the success that she's had with this book so far. It's just been great to witness after everything she's gone through. All right the next book I have to haul is the other book I'm currently reading and that is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I started reading this like a month ago and then I got sick and I went on my trip so I had to put it down and I have not been able to touch it for like a month but 
I'm getting back into it now and I'm very, very excited. I picked this up because I saw the cover and I loved it. Something about it really drew me in. And then I saw that it was blurbed by John Green and Aaron Morgenstern. And I was like, I'm gonna love this. Like I just know it already. And then it started getting really popular online and everyone was giving it raving reviews. So the hype is building, which is not necessarily a good thing. I'm worried that I'm hyping it up too much in my head, but based on everything I've seen about it, it seems like the type of thing that I have a high chance of enjoying. All I really know about it is that it's not really a love story, like it's kind of a romance, but not exactly about these two people who are friends who create this video game together. I literally don't know anything else about it. Like that's all I know. I'm just so curious to know what I'm gonna think and I want to love it so badly. I'll be really disappointed if I don't. <laughs> all right, next up I have the few books that I talked about in my most recent video, the um, reading five more romance books video. And the first one is none other than The Charm Offensive. I loved this book. If you watched that video, you know how I feel about it. So yeah, I'm not gonna go into too much detail with these books because you can go watch the video but yes literally my new favorite romance book highly recommend 10 out of 10 so good read it next up i have book lovers by emily henry again if you want to hear more of my in-depth thoughts you can go watch the video but i loved this one as well absolutely a romance book i would recommend and lastly of the books in that video i have a lady for a duke by Alexis Hall. Uh, historical romance, fantastic, highly recommend. Again, if you want more details, you can head over to that video. All right, next up, I have some other books that I read recently that I don't think I've talked about. So I'm not gonna talk about them too much because I do wanna do a wrap up like at the end of the summer, talking about all the books that I've read. So we're just gonna go through this quickly. But this first one is Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. This is like a gothic horror novel about these three sisters who are witches and they're overbearing, abusive, manipulative father. And there's some romance in it as well. And I don't wanna say much other than if you do wanna read this, look up the content warnings because it's really disturbing and it's really grotesque and really violent. And that's all because it's gothic horror, like that comes with the genre. Just know that if you do decide to read it, there's a lot of really heavy stuff in this and the imagery is very graphic a lot of the time. I don't wanna give you too much detail about my thoughts on it because I'll talk about it more in my wrap up video. But all I'll say is that this is going to be on my list of favorites for the year. Very, very high up there. Do with that what you will. <laughs> The other book that I read fairly recently in this haul that I haven't talked about yet is A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft. I talked about this a little bit in a live stream that I did recently, but again, I'm gonna talk about this more in a wrap up that I filmed, so I won't give you too many details on my thoughts. But the book is basically a YA fantasy novel that takes place in a world where alchemy exists. So the magic system in this world is alchemy based and it's very much inspired by a full metal alchemist. The author has said so themselves. So all of those things really set this book up for me to enjoy it. And I really did, but particularly the reason I loved this so much is because, in my opinion, I don't even want to say opinion because I think it's a fact, this book is heavily inspired, heavily inspired by Roy and Riza from Full Meadow Alchemist Brotherhood. And they are like one of my favorite ships of all time. So high up there. I have read so much fan fiction. It is embarrassing the number of fan fiction I have read about the two of them. And I swear to you, this is Roy and Riza fic. It's Roy and Riza fic in the best way. That's the highest of compliments coming from me. It's, yeah, that's all I'll say for now. I'll talk more about it in detail in my wrap up, but this has my seal of approval. <laughs> All right, and then after I read A Far Wilder Magic, I was like, I need to read Alison Saff's first book. So I decided to pick up Down Comes the Night. I literally know nothing about this book. I cannot give you a summary. I'm very sorry because I don't want to know anything about it. I just want to read it. All I know is that it's another YA fantasy book. So I'm going in with no preconceptions, no outside opinions, and hopefully I end up enjoying it as much as I enjoyed A Far Wilder Magic. All right, and then the next book, okay. <laughs> If these fall again, just just don't mind it. <laughs> just two books left, and the second to last one I have is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. I read Carval by Stephanie Garber years ago. To be honest with you, I don't remember anything about it. I just remember having a fun time reading it at the time. <laughs> and yes, I could continue on with the Carval series if I wanted to read more of her books, but then I'd have to reread the first book, and I don't feel like doing that. So because I felt like reading another one of her books, I decided to just try out her new series. <laughs> and this is the first book, Once Upon a Broken Heart. The second book comes out later this year, I believe, maybe very soon actually. I just really liked this UK cover. I thought it was so pretty. And that's honestly kind of why I bought it. <laughs> I try not to do that. I try not to be too impulsive with just like cover buys and stuff, but sometimes they're just so well designed. I can't not get it, you know? I really don't know anything about this book either, other than it's YA fantasy, kind of like fairy tale inspired. And that's 
that's all I really need to know. I think it has like a prince or a princess and like castles and stuff. I love that vibe. It's very fun to read every once in a while for me. So I'm really hoping that I enjoy this and that it's just like an immersive, fun, romantic YA fantasy. And that's really what I'm hoping to get out of this. All right, and then finally, the last book that I have in this haul is Beach Read by Emily Henry. After I read Book Lovers in my last romance video, I knew that I wanted to complete the Emily Henry trilogy and finally pick up her other book, technically her first romance book, because this is the one that I think everyone's kind of been telling me they think I'll like the most. So far, Book Lovers is by far my favorite one of the other two. I'm very curious to see which one ends up being my favorite. So yeah, that's why I picked this one up and I'm very excited to get around to it. All right, but there you all have it. That is it for my LA bookstore vlog and book haul. It was supposed to be a mini book haul. This is not mini, as you can clearly see. Oh my God. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> this is dangerous. I need to stop stacking them like this. Okay. That's better. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. I hope it was fun to see us go to the different bookstores as well as the book haul. Again, don't forget to check out the bracelet and the necklace as well as my reading journal in the description box below as always. But if you would like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.